welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica and today I have my last help me decide video for you. I am doing my best with my voice projection. I'm hoping that the volume is going to be loud enough. I just I don't have a whole lot in this throat so I'm just I'm doing the best that I can and I really wanted to get this video done and up so that you guys can help me decide and I can start to get my stuff planned out and get you know everything updated and finales done and intros done and all that stuff. It is such a busy time of year. So I am just going to jump right into this and hope for the best. There are some things that I have taken some swatches of and um, I've taken pictures of them. So you will see them on the screen as I talk about them. I have a bunch of singles here and I don't think I have anything. I have one to potted shadow and technically I have one duo which we'll get to that one in a second. I have not set a number of eyeshadows that I need help picking out. I just kind of want to see what everyone else is thinking as far as what I show you. If you think I should pan it, not pan it now, consider it later in the year, whatever. I have a bunch of projects I'm going to do. I am going to do a lot of the ones that I normally do, like Beauty A to Z and, you know, that kind of stuff, but I haven't decided how I'm going to break everything down. I will not be doing all eyeshadow for Beauty A to Z again for 2024. I, I want to finish stuff, and I, I feel like if I put all eyeshadow, it's going to really put a burden on that particular project, and I, it will take away from other projects. So I really want to spread everything out. So let's get into what I have picked. I am going to start with my Bare Mineral Shadows. Bear in mind, next year my goal is going to be to finish a lot and I am going to be setting a $5,000 use up goal. So um, I purposely picked some things like singles that I will actually get value from if I finish them. The first ones that I'm going to start with are going to be five full size Bare Minerals. They are all about half full. so. They would give me a good value and they probably wouldn't take as long as like a standard full pan of eyeshadow because you know they just there's not as much product in there these would probably be the equivalent of a well-loved like 26 millimeter pan of shadow that has like good pan on it already that's about how much product would be left in any of these so we are going to start at the very top that kind of um, yellowy, creamy color. It's beautiful. That is Heavenly Diamond. The one to the right of that is the shade Surprise. It is a beautiful purple with kind of like a raspberry shift to it. Continuing clockwise, we have Grace, which is kind of a taupey shade. It's a, it's a pretty satiny shimmer, taupey shade. I don't know how else to explain it, but it is very pretty. Below that, we have one that is definitely a satin, and it is water lily and then the last one is the shade cupcake that is a beautiful peachy color with um, a beautiful shift to it i don't know how to explain it it's almost like maybe a champagne shift to that and i will also have a picture of the swatches on the screen so on that swatch the top left is going to be heavenly diamond next to it is surprise on the second row on the left we have cupcake to the right of that is the shade grace and you can see the shift on that shows more than the actual color and then at the very bottom you have water lily i have two more bare mineral shadows these are the mini ones that came in a gift set so those are half of the size of the full size but these both also have usage on them the one on the left that is the shade dazzling and the one on the right that minty color is the shade jasmine tea that reminds me of chanrel every single time because of her tea and i probably should have put this in a project for her when i had her in painter's pan but i just i wasn't ready to work on this one but yeah that's what i think about every single time i use this shadow let me show you the swatches for dazzling and jasmine tea jasmine is a very deep satiny taupe it is one that would probably match a lot of stuff but just give me an overall darker look. And then Jasmine Tea on the right is very, very light and it will be nice for like springtime. And there is not a lot of it left. I would say maybe half of the product is left in there. All right, the next picture that I'm going to show you is this palette right here. It is a magnetic palette and it has the majority of Coastal Scents shades in it. Then I am going to also have a picture on the screen so you can see up close and personal 
what shades I am working with. On the very top row, the rectangular pans are from Coastal Scents. Those are mica pigments that I've had forever and I have just pressed into pans. The first one is a Reuben Coral Pearl Mica. I did not swatch any of these. There is just too many of them. The next one is Winterveld Mica. That one has a very lovely teal kind of shift to it. And then the pink one is Foliage Flutter. That one has a beautiful kind of orange shift. So the pink is more prominent. It does have like an orangey kind of shift, like a rusty orange shift is very pretty. And the square brown one that is from the Depotted Profusion Trendsetter Eyes Palette. And the reason I put this one in is because I have all of the other eyeshadows from that palette are either done or they are currently in a project. This is the Lone Holdout Shadow. I do have some gel eyeliners and brow powders still to finish, but this is one of those palettes that if I work on all the components for 2024, I might actually be able to have an official palette out of my collection and out of my inventory. It's not worth a lot, but it would be nice to just not have that in my inventory anymore. Let's go through all of the Coastal Scents Hot Pots. I believe they're all hot pots, though one of them might be a pressed bare minerals. So we will start at the top left, just like we're reading a book. That one is Cloud White. It has a lot of pan on it and it also is kind of thin. I feel like that one would be a very easy one to use up. The second one is actually not a Coastal Sense. That is an Elf Single and they haven't done those in forever. That is in the shade Ivory. That is also one I feel like it would be very easy to use up could be used in a lot of different eye looks. Next to that is Tuscan Terracotta. That to me is a really easy to use, kind of warmish to neutral transition shade. The fourth one is Aluminum Taupe. Next to that we have the shade New Penny. It does have a lot of product in it. I was able to hit pan on it close to the edge there, but there is a lot of product still in that one. It is beautiful to use, but that one might be a little bit more of a challenge. Next is the shade Kokomo Cafe. Absolutely love this one. This is a very versatile, multi-use, multitasking kind of shade. I could use it in my brows. I can use it, you know, to bronze. I could use it as an eyeliner, as an eyeshadow. I can use it in many different ways. And the last one on that first row of round pans is the shade Brownstone. That is one that I have used in the past as an eyeliner as well as in my brow. So it is fairly versatile. Moving on to row two, the first one is Peach Fuzz. That is definitely a well-loved shade in my collection. Then we have a matte shade that is Peach Puff. I have actually already panned one of these and then I repurchased it while Coastal Scents was still in existence. It is one that is very easy for me to use. Bright orange shade. I'm a little nervous with this one, but you know, might be worth working on. That is in the shade Marmalade. This beautiful rusty orange is Fire Glow. It is very pretty. Another crazy orange shadow that is in Bright Tangerine. That one I feel like is going to be a challenge, but you know, sometimes a challenge is a lot of fun. The shade next to it is kind of that orangey brown. This is really a favorite shadow of mine. I've had it for a while. This is Oktoberfest and it is a matte and I like, I absolutely adore the shade. Next to the last one on that row is New Terrain. That is another very multitasking type of shade. I can use it on my brows. I can use it probably to contour, eyeliner, you name it, I could use it in a lot of different ways. The same with the very last one, which is in the shade Timeless Taupe. That is also a very easy one to multitask. Moving on to the third row of the round pans. The first one is Ice Ballet. That is an absolute favorite of mine. It is thin on the one side. It has massive pan. I feel like it's gonna be a year of purples for me, so that is definitely not one that I would mind working on. Next to that is probably my favorite shade in all of the Coastal Scents Hot Pots, and that is the shade Amethyst. And you can tell because it has a nice pan on it, and I own two of them. It would not upset me to finish one because I know I have another one. The next purple would be a little bit of a challenge because it's more of a blurple. It is a royal purple with micro silver glitters, which don't convey on the eyes. The next one, as I suspected, is a Bare Minerals. This is the shade Phoebe. This, this one would be a challenge as well, but I am up to it because 
that one could easily be used as a liner. Another shade that I could use in my brows, this is Blackberry. It is gonna be a little bit harder than some of the ones that are not quite as dark. The next one is like the perfect neutral transition shade for me. This is in the shade Mauve. I know it doesn't look very mauve, but I didn't name the shadow, I just own it. Another challenge would be Pomegranate Red. It is beautiful, I do enjoy my reds. This one would be hard. It would probably take most of the year to do if I could even finish it, but it is a very fun shade. That bright pink with a baby pan is actually called neon bright pink because it is very neon. It would be a challenge, but it might be fun to play with it too. Moving on to the very last row of the round pans, starting with the shade Canary Diamond absolute favorite probably not like my number one but it is really high ranking up in my hundreds of single eyeshadows i love my yellows that one is a beautiful one to use next to that is midas gold uh, again i love my yellows even the mustard yellows i like them all the next one doesn't have a name on it it is that old it is the coastal sense hot pot in s01 i believe it's called celadon green don't have it right in front of me at the moment i do really like that one a lot my only worry with that one is it might be a conflict with one of the shadows that i have in the panners pan it's not exact but they are similar so that one might not be the best one i i do like my greens i will wear a lot of green so i'm not opposed to it either next to that beautiful matte shade is pale green tea. It's another chamrel color. It will coordinate with what I have in other projects. Next to that is Hop and Jalapeno, which is a lovely shade, as you can tell by the massive pan that I have on there. Beautiful dark green shimmer is called Balsam. I love this shade. It is, again, in my top favorites. My only concern with this one, maybe, is that it might be a conflict with another green that I have in the painter's pan. That beautiful cool green shimmer is called Limeade. Absolutely love it. And then the very last shade, I know y'all are thinking I'm crazy right now, that is the shade Blue Hawaiian. It is pretty. It will be a challenge, but again, sometimes a challenge is a good thing. We are in the home stretch. I do have some of my Luxie shadows. I did not pull them all. I just pulled uh, two greens, two in the orange family, and six in the purple family. Can you see how I'm trending for next year? Definitely feeling the purples. So let's start with the purple shades. On that picture, the top one on the left is the shade Charmed. Second one in the top row is Cosmo. And the third one in the top row is the shade Feels. Moving on to that second row in the picture, we have Painted Lady, Licorice Lace. And the last one is the shade Ubi, Ubi, I'm not really sure how that's pronounced. It's the letters U-B-E. And the next picture is going to be swatches of all of those. I will tell you which ones they are. So top left is Charmed, then Cosmo, and then Feels. On the bottom, Painted Lady. Then we have Licorice Lace, and that pinky purple is Ubi. Moving on to the next picture, we're in the oranges. First one is Caddy Pillar. And the one to the right is Hot Rod. And that is the same way they are in the swatches. On the left is Caddy Pillar, and the right is Hot Rod. I like them both, and I would be happy to pan either one, maybe both. I, I might be okay with that too. And finally, the greens. The first one on the left is Emerald City, and then the one on the right is Jeepers Creepers. On the swatch picture, the one on the left is Emerald City and the one on the right is Jeepers Creepers and you can see Jeepers Creepers definitely has like some brown kind of leanings which is very interesting where Emerald City on the left you can see just a little bit of gold shift in that one and then we are moving on to the very final ones that I have put in for you guys to pick two coastal scents shadows the top one is a hot pot and the reason these were not in with my other stuff is because these are being rolled out of other projects so I didn't want to get them all mixed up. So the one on the top left is the shade Pink Mauve. On the right is the Oppressed Mica Pigment, and that is Chameleon Violet Mica Powder. And then below that, I actually have a depotted shadow liner kind of thing from Laura Geller. I believe it's Dutch Chocolate and Unearth. Don't ask me which one is which right off the top of my head but I will show you swatches of those in the next picture. So that is everything that I want to show you as far as my singles depotted and my one duo, whatever, however you want to call it, my extra shadows, non-palette shadows that I am potentially thinking of putting into a project. I would love it if you guys let me know what you would like to see me pan. 
and if there's any you specifically do not want to see me pan, I'm okay with that too. Again, I have not decided how many I want to put in. I do want to put a fair amount in, but I don't want to overload myself at, a, at the same time without putting a set number on it. So let me know what you all think down below. And I'm going to wrap this up because I still have to edit it and uh, stop talking so I can work on this voice some more. All right. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And until I see you on my next video, have a beautiful day.